This warm up is gonna have us down on the floor because we spend a lot of time on our wrists. We're gonna go ahead and start off with the wrists. First off, just place your fingers on the ground and you're going to focus on pushing your palm towards the ground. And so we're not trying to put our hand on the ground again. We're pulsing into the ground. It's about five to 10 pulses. You can do both hands if you would like. I just like to do these separately. On the last pulse, you're gonna hold this. You should really feel this in the fingers, every joint of the fingers. Holding this for about 10 seconds. Now this warm up is gonna be pretty quick as we go through it. I'm only doing 10 pulses, then a 10 second hold for each position that we're gonna be doing in this warm up. Feel free though to do longer holds if you would like. Holding this one now for about 10 seconds. The palm pushing towards the floor, the focus is on the fingers when we're doing this. Now next up, you can feel free to use both hands when you're doing this one because the hands are gonna be flat on the ground with the fingers facing towards the knees. The focus here is on bending the elbows and sitting back. You're gonna feel this all the way from the wrist all the way into the forearm. This, it, our arm is not straight, so we're not really going to be focusing it past, focusing on the stress past the elbow. It's really for the forearm, the wrists, and the hand when we're doing this. So once again, this is gonna be 10 pulses. I'm just gonna do five here real quick. We've already been doing this a little bit. Bending the elbows when you're doing this. Finally, in the last one, holding this for 10 seconds. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. We're gonna go ahead and continue keeping the arms straight, pushing down and through the ground, sitting back. This time, because the arms are straight, it's gonna be a deeper stretch up the arm when you're performing this. We're always pushing down and away from the ground. So we're not sinking into the hands when we're doing this. We're gonna hold this one, continuing to push down and away. If this is too difficult for you, feel free to bring your hands closer to your knees so that you can keep your arms straight. Now, next we're gonna do, before we go back to having our fingers facing that way, is having our fingers facing forward. We're pushing down and through the ground again. Elbow pits are facing forward. We're gonna rotate forward. One, two, three, four, five. Keep pushing down and away from the ground. Elbow pits are facing forward. Hold this one, you're pushing, push, push, push. Feel it good stretch in the wrist when doing this. This will help to do this every single day. We're gonna finish off by flipping our hands so that your palms are facing upward. You might have difficulty doing this one, find that your elbows are bent. If that's the case, simply pull your hands closer to your knees or even inside, inside in between your knees. From here, you're going to be pushing the thumbs down towards the ground, the thumbs will not be flat on the ground, that's fine, but rotating the elbow pits forward, pushing down away from the ground, sitting back 10 times, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, hold, push down, down away from the ground, keep pushing, pushing, pushing. If this is very painful, back off, pull the, pull the hands closer to your knees. Should be no pain, if you're feeling any pain, stop doing it, get it checked out. All right, shake the wrist out there. Now, what we're gonna do, placing the hands on the ground, we're gonna go ahead and continue with the arms. We're gonna rotate the elbow pits. So you're pushing down and through the ground, making sure you splay the fingers, fingers are very wide, index fingers facing forward. You're simply gonna rotate the arms. Now don't let your hands peel off of the ground. Hands should be flat on the ground. You're just rotating the elbow pits so that they're facing forward. And then the last one, you're gonna push the elbow pit so they're facing forward, try and rotate to the outside external rotation of the arms, just holding this. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Before we go into the shoulders, we're gonna do the neck. I'm gonna show you this from the side. So all I would like to do when I'm performing this is to drop my neck down to the ground and pull the head back. So I'm pushing my head towards the ground, but I'm not shrugging my shoulders. I'm keeping my shoulders neutral. When I pull the head back, I'm gonna tuck the chin slightly. It's kind of difficult for me to talk when I do this. So in and out of this position, 
This is really going to help with the neck. This is a closed chain neck in terms of just having the hands on the ground. Of course, the head not on the ground. So it's not a pure closed chain in terms of keeping the neck in connection with the ground. Pushing the head down towards the ground as much as possible, holding for 10 seconds. I'm going to pull the head back, taking the chin slightly. This is 10 seconds. All right, so the next thing I'm going to keep in this position, and now what I'm going to do is focus on performing scap shrugs, if you will. Now I'm trying to pull my shoulder blades together by keeping my arms straight. Now I push away from the ground, pulling the shoulder blades apart as much as possible. Try not to incorporate the hips on this one. The focus should be on the shoulder blades the entire time going in and out of this position, keeping the arms straight. Now. If you're having trouble with this, something that you can do is just do one arm. So folks, I'm pushing down and away from the ground. This might make it a little easier to get a better feel for this movement. You're gonna push down and away, hold in this for 10 seconds. And then opposite side, one, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pushing down and away. I will say, breathe through the nose. Don't hold your breath when you're doing this. Let the breath be uh, natural, and that you're breathing just through the nose, and the breath will automatically know to inhale, exhale where needed. This time, you're going to focus on rotating the shoulders. So, slight angle when I show this. Pulling the shoulders back and down, rotating in and out. You're making circles, trying to keep the arms straight. Once again, if you're having trouble with both hands on the ground, you can then shift and go to one arm. So you're going in and out of this position 10 times. And this time, you can focus on dropping and pulling your shoulder blades together because on that first one where it was just up and down, you're pushing away from the ground, working on extending yourself away from the ground. This time you're pulling your chest down towards the ground and holding this for 10 seconds. Next, we're gonna focus on rotating the spine. So when rotating the spine, think of leading with the chest when you're dropping the chest to the ground, leading with the side on your lats, going to the side as you make the circle. As you push your back up towards the ceiling, focus on leading with the back and then likewise leading with the side. So I'm dropping the chest, pushing with the lat, pushing the back towards the ceiling, opposite side lat, pushing to the side and dropping down, continuing to make this big circle, trying to keep my arms straight the entire time. Now for this, we're not going to be holding this. You're just going to be going in this movement, continuing with this five times in one direction, switching going the opposite direction, leading with the lat, pushing the stomach, chest down towards the ground, lat, back, lat, chest, stomach, lat, and back up to the top. Now for our next movement is going to be anterior posterior pelvic tilts. I have my shoulders over my hands. I'm on my toes. My hips are over my knees. I'm simply going to squeeze my butt. Boom, right there, pelvic tilt. Okay, I also feel this in the core. Now I'm going to push my butt up towards the air. You're going to feel this in the lumbar, the lower back. Any pain, then back off slightly. And you're just going to work on going back and forth, squeezing the butt then pushing the butt up towards the scene. I know this looks weird, but it can be really good for overall hip health as well as lower back issues. Pull the hips forward. Exhale as you pull the hips forward by squeezing your butt. Inhale as you push the butt back in the air. Again, I know this looks super weird when you're doing it, but 
It's very good for lumbar health. You can also focus on holding that in each position if you feel the need. Next up from that position, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna open your knees as widely as possible. The focus should be on keeping the hips directly in between the knees when performing this. I'm gonna show it from the front. I'm also gonna show it from the back, uh, from, pardon me, from the side when I'm doing this. Now, keeping the hands and the elbows on the floor, you're simply going to go forward, pulsing with this 10 times. And continue on dropping the hips close to the floor as you perform this. The last one, you're holding it in the front position. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Show this from the side. I'm opening up my knees as wide as possible. I start by keeping my hips in line with my knees. Now I'm gonna push back. Notice that my feet are flat on the ground in terms of I have, I'm on the sides of my feet, I have my heel pulled down to the ground, my toes are on the ground, I'm sitting back. This is a very deep stretch. You don't need to go too far into this. 10 pulses, six, seven, eight, nine, and you're gonna hold back here for a count of 10, focusing on dropping the hips down towards the ground. Now from here, something you could do if you would like, go back to a neutral position. We're just gonna focus on pulling one foot off of the ground, keeping the foot in that flat position. Again, pulsing this. Doing about 10 times, I'm gonna hold this last one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Opposite side, one. Pulses, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, and 10. I'm holding this, sinking the hips down, keeping myself facing forward when I'm doing this and not going side to side. All right, from here, when I get out of this, I'm gonna allow myself to fall forward and then pull my legs together. I've just found that that's the easiest way to get into that position. From here, I'm gonna sit back. What I'm gonna do now is focus on dropping my elbow to the ground. And this is gonna give me a nice stretch on the side here. So pulsing into this position. 10 times, exhaling as I go into the position. I'm gonna hold the last one here. That's a pushing away from the ground, pulling back, dropping down. Really good stretch all the way down towards my hip. I'm gonna switch the direction, or pardon me, I'm gonna switch arms. I'm gonna drop the elbow down now. I can open up my arm a little bit if I need be. I like to keep my palm down. If you have trouble with flexibility in this, again, you can open up a little bit if you need to go deeper. All right, what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna go ahead and stay in this position, but I'm gonna take my arms off to the side. This time, sitting back and pulling, pulling myself as I push the hands into the ground. Again, just a little deeper stretch. 10 times, I'm gonna pulse this. Holding the last one. Notice that my arms are straight. I'm not dropping the elbow down to the ground. Switch it up, opposite side, hips are forward, hands are out to the side, sitting back, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I'm pushing into the floor, pushing into the floor, sitting back, holding this for 10. All right, I'm gonna come back to center. Now you can stay in center, and what we're going to do is simply go forward, pulling ourselves into the upper facing dog position when we're performing this. Show this from the side. 
So simply having my arms out to the front, dropping the hips, and immediately going right back into that position where I bring my butt to my heels. Feel free to place your feet flat on the ground if you would like. It's up to you. You can go a little deeper into the stretch. And then I'm going to hold this position, relaxing in it, pushing down away from the floor. If this is too much for your lower back. Feel free to pull out of it slightly. Go side to side if you would like. You're gonna feel a little bit more in the hip flexors. Now from this position, I'm gonna bring my toes back up. I'm gonna bring one leg forward. In this case, I have my left leg forward. I'm at a 90, 90 degree position. I'm going to bring my chest up, I'm facing forward. I'm gonna squeeze my butt. Squeeze the butt. You notice that we're tilting the pelvis now. And you're going to feel this all the way down to your knee. From here, while keeping that squeeze in the butt, we're gonna pulse forward. Forming this 10 times for the pulse. Squeezing the entire time. I'm gonna hold, still squeezing. You're really gonna feel this. If you relax, you're gonna be able to go further forward, but that's not the point. The point here is, is going deep into the stretch. Now, something else that you can do is adjust the position of the foot and back. So let's say, for example, there's a different place in the hip that you would like to stretch. Simply changing the position of the back foot and then continuing to squeeze the butt and then go forward, you're going to feel where you need that stretch. So that's something to take into consideration when you're doing that. And so I'm gonna stay on this side. And what I'm going to do now is world's greatest stretch. And so I'll show from the front, I'll show from the side. The hand is going to go in line with your front foot. The leg and back is going to push back. Rather than raising your hips into the air, keep your hips where they are. Draw your heel back towards the floor. So you're pushing the heel back, keeping the hips in the same position. I'll show this from the side here in a minute. You're going to twist, taking the arm up into the air immediately, trying to drop the elbow towards the ground, and then the hand goes through, reaching back up and pulse in and out of this position. You're only gonna do this three times. Pulsing in here. This time we're gonna hold right here. We're gonna hold one, two, three, four. Back leg is straight. You're really trying to drop your chest towards the floor here. You can have a slight bend in the arm, perfectly fine. Great, this time we're gonna reverse it. Your leg is straight in the back. Arm is extended towards the ceiling. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now, just quickly to show you from the side what I was referring to when you're performing this, you don't wanna pull your butt up into the air to extend the leg. Keep the hips low, push the heel back. Push the heel back. So we're gonna do this on the other side in just a moment, but before we switch to the other side, we're now gonna perform a hamstring stretch, but pulling the feet back, pardon me, pulling the toes back towards us, this is going to allow us to stretch the calf all the way back. So we're gonna start up with our toes off of the ground, we're sitting back. You're immediately going to feel it all the way, pulling from the heel all the way up past the knee. If your calves are tight, you might actually only feel it in the calf. Keeping the chest, on the thigh when you're doing this. So if you can only go back this far, that's fine. You're gonna feel it, don't worry. <laughs> okay, we're gonna hold this last one. Pulling the toes back. Notice my knee is bent, it's perfectly fine. This is my range of motion right now. Pulling those toes back, sitting into it just a bit more. All right. So now we're going to switch. And so I'm gonna show this from the front. 
Actually, I'm gonna switch for it so you can see the entire uh, motion that I'm doing here from the side. So 90, 90, I'm on my opposite leg. Now I squeeze my butt and I'm pulsing forward 10 times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Really squeezing, feeling the stretch and the hip flexor all the way up into the abs and down. From here, I'm gonna go directly into the world's greatest stretch. Hand is beside, I don't raise my butt, I push the heel back. This gives me a good stretch here. Dropping my elbow towards the floor, opening up. This time I'm gonna do the full 10 pulses. Two. Three. Four. Six, going deeper each time. Eight, nine, and 10. As I come back through, holding this, holding it, extending the heel and the back, dropping the elbow to the ground, dropping my chest towards the floor. Bend your arm a little bit, perfectly fine. Holding that, 10 seconds. Now I'm gonna open up. Again, driving the leg back, twisting, extending the arm to the ceiling. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This time, chest goes to thigh, pulling the toes back, sitting back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're gonna hold this, pulling the toes back. So we're in this position. All we're gonna do is place the foot on the ground and going to as deep of a squat as we can. Now, if you need to open up your feet a little bit, that's perfectly fine, okay? Uh, try, try and point your toes forward, but again, if you can't, it's totally cool. The reason that we're gonna do this is we're gonna perform circles. This is for the ankles. If you can't go this deep into a squat, that's also cool. Just go as deep as you can. We might need to hold on to something. And we're looking at the ankles, the knees, the hip flexors. It's also gonna help with the lower back as well. You'll probably notice my right foot turns out. I just don't have the range of the motion, uh, range of motion in that ankle simply because I broke it. And I'm still working on trying to gain that range of motion in that position. So from here, hang out just a little bit more, bringing the chest up, shaking things out just a little bit. We're gonna sit down now. You can stay in this position, but I'm gonna show you from the side what's gonna be going on. We sit down, we're gonna place one hand behind. This is a three-point bridge. You're gonna look at your thumb. You're gonna extend your hips to the ceiling, pulling the arm back. You do this five times, that's it. Three. Four, hold this one, extending the arm, pushing down into the floor, external rotation, looking at your thumb as it's going over the top holding for 10 seconds. And opposite side. One, two, three, four, and five, extend, extend. Push, push, push. Driving the hips up towards the ceiling. And that's your warm up. So think of it going from fingers up the arms, neck down to the hips, ending in the squat and the bridge. Give it a try.